Hey, Boo Boo, let's go steal a picnic meal. Who the heck are you? I'm Homer Barbera, smarter than the average Homer. <laughs> you sound just like an actor named Art Carney. Don't tell his estate. <laughs> Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Would a kiss from a princess make it right? Who are you? I'm Disney Princess Homer. <laughs> okay, from now on, you just sing. <laughs> Do hey, hey, all, all you people out there in the world. Welcome to Virtual Comic Con 2020. This is the Simpsons panel. I am Yardley Smith. I'm going to boss everybody around. I'm just the moderator. Um, and I have with me today the A-team. I have Mike Anderson, who is our supervising animation director. He wrangles all the cats. I have Matt Selman, executive producer and writer extraordinaire. I have David Silverman, um, producer and animation director as well. I have the wonderful, beautiful Carolyn Omine, writer, who I adore. And we have the hardest working man in television, Al Jean, executive producer and writer of our show. How are you all? Simply grand. Great. Doing well. Yay. At home. At home, indeed. At home, because um, 2020 is really making a name for itself. <laughs> um, I do always like to start off uh, gatherings like this with one random question, since we've all been on lockdown forever and ever. What have you all been eating? Carolyn, let's start with you because you, you're sort of, you have the hat trick. What is my hat trick? Your hat trick is that you've been making baguettes from scratch. That's true. I did make baguettes from scratch. I don't think I've been eating anything that interesting. I feel like I, oh, I just learned that Bay City's, uh, Deliver. So I did have a Bay City's meatball sub not too long ago. That was pretty good. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. Some people are eating super healthy. I'm not one of those <laughs> people. I'm, I, I am cooking more than I've ever had before. But same. I've, I've cooked more than I've ever cooked in my whole life, and I'm, and I cook quite a bit. So, um, how about you, Selman? I know you're a champion eater. Well, I've transitioned to. Uh pandemic eating which is now i eat whatever is going to go bad next <laughs> i know whether it's good or bad or mm -hmm. delicious or not it doesn't matter i look in the fridge and whatever's going to go bad that i'm as the man who was in charge of keeping my family alive in the rationing times i just was so it's like a can of like a can of beans like a from a hobo or like <laughs> some meat that my wife was saving to give to put on the dog food that I didn't realize. Sure. So basically, whatever looks oldest about to go rotten. I eat. You're willing to take one for the team. Mm -hmm. How about you, Al Jean? Well, uh, let me just say I've become the Mad Max of getting paper towels. Whenever I go out shopping, I come back with paper towels, no matter what. <laughs> there could be blood in the car, but the towels are there. David Silverman, I know last time we checked in with you that it was it was a pretty grim situation. It was a lot of popcorn. It's gotten better. I've I've, I've supplemented the popcorn diet with uh, asparagus and other vegetables. I'm learning how to cook, and uh, I'm very happy. I made I made a very good corn on the cob, and uh, I like like uh, like Selman, I eat whatever is up to bat before it expires, <laughs> uh, and um, I actually. Uh, I was happy the other day. I actually had some fish and chips from Cat and Fiddle, picking up from there. So uh, excellent, excellent. More and of that. Last but not least, um, are well, you staying alive? I'm. I'm clearly at a lot. Yes. Um, Tell us about it, Captain. I let it go out of date, and I eat it anyway. But uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> I've been eating my my wife. I, I was usually at work and always missed dinner. Now I'm at home and she's quite a cook, so I'm eating a lot of yeah, amazing food. Really? Yeah. Um, well, that brings me actually to a question. Which when I was talking to you um, a couple of days ago, Mike, I was curious to hear how the animation process. Now I don't know why I thought you all work on big machines and that you needed to be in the studio or wherever you all congregate down there in the valley to do our show. But you were saying everybody has 
has their own equipment and they're doing it at home. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we when all this started happening, um, we moved everybody out to home and had to do this colossal uh, transformation where people, if they didn't have a computer, then we'd have to bring one of their computers from the office or tech would set them up. But we very quickly, within the matter of a week, maybe a week and a half, uh, got the whole thing running from home. And so it's the same meetings, but you don't have to drive. You can sit and eat in date stuff. And, um, <laughs> So it, it, it's worked out very good, except that everyone I know now is flat and this big, so. Right. <laughs> fair, fair. And do you prefer it? Like, do you prefer this kind of gathering, the community standing, or do you, pref you guys like to be all together, all of you? Like, because you guys, you writers are also having to do virtual Zoom rooms. Um, has, it, has it worn out its welcome? I, th I think the way that uh, the virus is transmitted, I don't know when we'll be able to do a writer's room again <laughs> because it's the worst thing to be is a small room with air conditioning and everybody talking really loud. So uh, we'll just getting, this is literally our 15th week doing it this way. We're June 17th is today and um, no end in sight. So we'll make the best of it. I, I miss, I mean, I think we're all, you know, I mean, I do have slight agoraphobic uh, tendencies, so I'm sort of those things that there's a part of me that loves this staying in thing, but uh, but I do miss. I think there is an energy. I'm so exhausted at the end of the. Like I never used to come home from a day of work and be like, I need a nap. But like we were even working slightly less hours, and it's I'm I'm kind of ruined for the day. And I don't know if it's if it's staring at the screen, but then somebody told me, and it sounds really new agey, but I do think it might be true that like that there is energy you get from other people, and yeah, I think that uh, so I do miss. I feel like there's a sense of play that's not quite as easy to achieve, and I do miss running into people in the kitchen and just having these sort of one-on-one -on -one conversations with. You can't really do that. You can't have like these sort of more friend type talks with people like everything is like to the group and 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 for public consumption so yeah i feel like that that's it's a little bit different but i mean you know it's it's we can figure out a way to keep going sure. right i mean this, the strength of the show is collaboration and people feeding off each other's energy and i certainly miss all of your energies being around you funny people and that kind of stuff um i have one funny weird new zoom thing which is i put my ipad on my treadmill and I just walk all day slowly. <laughs> I mean I I could do it now, but it's it feels disrespectful to Comic Con <laughs> at home. So basically so you're happy. I, I slowly walk and then I look and I've done like fifteen thousand steps. <laughs> just kind of slowly walking. I I actually, can I do a little can I do a little trick yardly where every time I talk I hold up one of my from my Simpson Cell collection? Of course. This is one from the first episode I wrote, Natural Born Kissers. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's Arthur good. and Homer are being into dangerous lovemaking and they're in a little bit of trouble there. So sweet. So, so sweet. Um, David, when I was, uh, I had a question actually for Mike Anderson, who actually really threw the answer to you when I was talking to him a couple of days ago. So there is this story, and obviously there's evidence that Matt, his original drawings were a lot like Life in Hell. And then I always heard that he said to you guys, all right, I want you to make the characters better looking. I don't know how to draw. It seems impossible. And I was, as I was saying to Mike, it's sort of like, you know, if Michelangelo says, okay, well, here's the ceiling, you know, of the um, chapel. Could you just improve on that? And I should think as an artist yourself, first of all, highly unusual. Um, and second of all, I'm told that you're the one who really came up with the designs that we all know and love now. Can you talk to us about that? Because also one more thing, Mike Anderson said, when he, it's such a beautiful story, and we told it last year at Comic Con. But when he saw the drawings of the Simpsons, the Christmas special, he was like, "Oh my God, I already draw like that." But you did not, and I think that's so. Again, like, what is it like to go from your own style transition to somebody else's very specific style? What is that like? 
Well, two things. I mean, if you're going to be an animator, you're going to do that in any any event. You're going to that's part of the gig. But uh, it's not quite like that. I would say Matt draws very funny. He has a very funny way of drawing, very funny style. So at the beginning of the Tracy Ullman shorts, he was doing some very tight, um, you know, like layout drawings, but they were not consistent in the following week and so forth. And he, that's when he said to me and Wes Archer, and the, back then also Bill Kopp, that I want you to evolve kind of the style uh, as, you know, the, you, could, you, could, you could improve on it, basically. And even like it even improve on like the staging, which allowed us latitude. Where essentially, we were kind of, you know, after uh, after the first uh, 15 episodes, uh, Bill had left, and it was me and Wes Archer. We were kind of co-directing these things and looking over each other's shoulder. How are you drawing the characters today? <laughs> um, so uh, it was kind of, we didn't have time to really figure it out. So we just organically figured it out. And we were using things from Life in Hell, like the Simpsons kitchen is largely based on the way Matt drew the kitchen in Life in Hell. And that was sort of our point of reference. And we tried to stylize the backgrounds referring to Matt's Life in Hell um, comic strip. And that's how it evolved from there. Uh, and I guess, you know, it was a combination of what Wes brought to the table and I brought to the table. You know, we both brought, I think, equal amounts of, of, of you know, personality and energy and, and design to the to the characters. Um, and in fact, uh, when it came to the beginning of the, the, the uh, series in 89, uh, Wes took over on doing the turnaround models on the main characters, and I was working on the main title. So that's how we kind of broke down that. Uh, you mean like the, the where Bart, Bart's skateboarding and... Yeah, the whole main title design was working with, with Matt and uh, right, right. late great Sam Simon you know, with the jokes and designing the board and so forth, and, uh, and like that. He has those on uh, legal pad paper on his wall <laughs> in the office. Yes, I, I should have. Uh, amazing, I'll, amazing. Maybe I'll walk off and bring some in. I mean, all I have right now, it's not that. I think I've, this is a, here's a nice drawing of Pressy. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh that's so good. Pressy gets canceled. Uh, we, for some reason, we fixed his, his shoe up a little bit, but I kind of like that. I like it, too. You that do have episode, such a... Uh, Distinct and specific style, David. I guess I do. I, I mean, I, I don't notice it because I'm always drawing it. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Matt, someone told me to bring visual stuff too. So I did bring some. So I'm just going to randomly do this. But I once, we needed a selfie for, uh, we're doing this talk at Bumbershoot. So David Silverman did Homer doing a mirror selfie. <laughs> <laughs> And he's making really, duck face, really which I love. Yes. I don't know we're doing that. I love that. I actually That's have a video of you doing it. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I must have done it. Oh, I love it. Um, I, let me see. I had some. Uh, oh, Al, I have a question for you. So Mike Anderson now wrangles all the cats because, Mike, you used to direct episodes and you did a lot of background. That's how you started right on our show. Doing yeah, stuff background like cleanup was my first. Yeah, job. background cleanup. He literally started from the the the, the, the first thing I ever drew was one of the seats in Moe's bar. Oh my god! That's the first thing on Simpsons I ever drew. That's so great. It's I like hope the you, best. I hope you still have that. Um, well, it's been committed to an episode, so <laughs> I don't have the actual. A lot of people drawing, have seen so. it. So my question, but now you're sort of, you're the big guy and you oversee all the animators and Al, you run, run a, one of the writer's rooms. You don't get to write as much as you used to. Do you miss it? Well, I, I still do a pretty fair amount. And um, we have two separate rooms. And what's funny is since this happened, we have no communication basically. <laughs> so I asked everybody yesterday, I was like, how late does Selman's room get out? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure like it wasn't a huge difference. Great <laughs> PM. <laughs> they could have lied. They could have said I, three in the afternoon. And then Peter. I would have felt really guilty. But no, it turned out about, randomly we were doing about exactly the same time. Yeah, I feel it's about the same. Yeah. I think Al's work ethic is so impressive. I, I feel like it's something I have to live up to. I agree. It's sorry, we all aspire to Al's work ethic. Uh, my, my, my other question for you, Al, is I feel like your whole life is consumed by The Simpsons 24 7 because of the position that you hold on our show and you've been you you were showrunner for seasons three and four and then you left and you came back is that's correct right in 2001 uh in 2001 yeah yeah 13. 
And so what what sort of television do you watch? Uh, I just watched a show by Kenyon Barris called Black AF, which I thought was really funny. It's um, like a Curb Your Enthusiasm where Kenya is the main guy. Um, and uh, I, not, I mean, what I, there's not much to watch now, but I, I watch, you know, Seth Meyers is really great and John Oliver. So, uh, you, you know, anybody who's funny right now is in, is in deep demand, I think. Right, right. Um, Selman, when people ask you what you do for a living, do you ever lie? Do any of you ever lie? <laughs> well, there's this thing called airplane mode. <laughs> I like to advertise. My phone never rings, but because it's close to the computer. <laughs> Whatever. This, That's this me calling. This is Comic Con. This is, we're recording <laughs> this on July 18th. The day it airs. In the couch. Um, now, I can't figure out how to turn it off. Banish it to the couch. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Gardley was saying, like, do I ever lie about what I do? Sometimes if I sense it's a big conversation, I'll just say I, I write for TV. And yeah. they'll just be like, okay, whatever. I don't watch TV or my favorite show is Frasier. And I'm like, yeah, Frasier's great. So, you know, but like, you know, it's sort of funny, like, maybe like, speaking of, it's almost, it's almost yeah. Al's 20th anniversary. We need to have a, a an Al Comic Con, an Al Gene Con. We just invite all Al stuff and have a whole thing. Anyway, I'm going to work on that. Um, um, I, I'm very happy that all our work is on Disney Plus. It's really, Disney Plus. I mean, to have your whole career and, and by the way matt has you know sort of the new guy has only been here what 22 years <laughs> it's like right longer than anybody else ever worked on anything else including this show <laughs> but, um, i don't know it used to be that like you would tell people you worked here and they kind of assumed you were a genius and now they they sort of you tell them you work here and they assume you're very old so <laughs> <laughs> i know there was a swear like three years ago that's very fair. I didn't like when that happened. So wait, here's yeah. one more. This is uh, Homer using deodorant on his junk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. No. So, my which show, which show was that? It. Um, Trilogy of Error, I think. Yeah, because yeah. I directed it. I was oh, right, directed by Mike Anderson. He, he's not really using deodorant, I'm sorry to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this would be a good time to quickly throw. We have one little clip. Uh, that I just want to set up. It's uh, what happened to the Halloween candy. It's from next year's Treehouse of Horror. Ooh. Ooh. Let's watch. <laughs> you wonder and what happened to that turkey on Thanksgiving, on uh, <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And when, so I know the Halloween episodes are the most complicated because the backgrounds aren't the same. We aren't wearing the same clothes, everything, you know, it's all parodies of things oftentimes. And so are, do you have multiple directors for those episodes, for the Halloween episodes? Well, the very first one. One guy. Before we really did, we used to divide it in threes. Right. Now it, it's sort of a thing where, you know, everybody wants their shot to do one Halloween show by themselves because it's like just such a great opportunity. Right. Yeah, we we only happen. directed the, the first the first episode was we split it up to threes, but after that we uh, the second Halloween episode we one director. And the writers used to split it, but we don't now. That's right. I was gonna but say write it with everybody. Uh, it was myself, uh, Wes Archer and Rich Moore did the first uh, as people probably know, and then uh, Jim Reardon did the uh, second Halloween episode. And what was that first one like? Was it just like, oh shit, like, oh, I had no idea? Or was it like, oh, this is awesome, I got this? Quite honestly, it was like this. Each one of us, Wes, Rich, and myself had already, we had five episodes to direct. I don't know how we did it. And here's a third of an episode to do. Okay, okay, well, we gotta <laughs> squeeze that in. And uh, uh, it was, but it was very exciting. It was like really cool because we hadn't done anything like that. By the way, we were only like, you know, maybe 15 episodes in by the time we're doing that Halloween episode. No, there's, a, there's, a rare, there's a rare syndrome, David, that if you direct too many episodes in your youth, you become addicted to horned instruments. <laughs> uh, are you That's familiar with this question? <laughs> I'm like, but George, you're right. <laughs> Where did you learn to play the tuba? Uh, 
at home. Uh, no, I started when I was my, uh, uh, in high school, uh, as, as, as many people do, picking up an instrument, and I just stuck to it. Actually, uh, I kind of drifted away from it, but then I drifted back, with, apparently with a vengeance. Give a, hey, Dave, give us a toot, man. <laughs> Can we do that? <laughs> yeah. Light it on fire. Sure. All right. Well, I can't do that in for the low ceiling, but all right. I think there's a tuba there that wasn't there at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how that happens. Do they all work? Yes, they do. They do. See, oh. you're never going to see this in San Diego, folks. Yeah, I told you this in San Diego, but I should have practiced. What am I going? Is there, does San Diego even exist anymore? I hope so. <laughs> Um, so sorry, say say that again. So you so you wrote you co-wrote an episode with Brian Kelly about um, New Orleans and and I was sitting in the music spotting session because I wanted to be there. I I already chose a couple of uh, needle drops for for the for the uh, uh, show and I wanted to be there for the and anyhow I'll mention that I play the tuba and the guys say, well, why don't you play on this? And I thought, okay, that'd be a fun idea. So that was great. <laughs> awesome. Um, Carolyn, when I do interviews, people always ask me um, if I am afraid of being typecast because I've done Lisa Simpson for a hundred years, and if I like, does it keep me from other work? And I'm like, you know, I can't worry about that. But I wondered if, since all of you have been on the show for so long, do you worry that when our show is over, that you'll be typecast as an animation writer? No, we'll never be over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Learn to hear first, folks. I don't know that that uh, exists as much. In, uh, you don't think? Not for writers. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I think more the. I. I don't know. I mean, just in my. I. I think it's. It's harder to go from writing live action to writing animation. I think there's more of a learning curve. But yeah. So well, one you can be anywhere. It's it's not just like crossing to the couch where everybody knows how you do that. Like it, it, they could float, they could you know they can you could you can do anything, and I just feel like the backgrounds are way denser. Just the way you think about um, just the, the you know I, I think we do imagine a, a more fantastical world if you if you just had everything in just that sort of proscenium three camera, you know, it's it's a different kind of, right. Know, it's, it's a hard Sorry. thing. But I don't know if it's that hard to go back, but maybe it is. I, what, I what I would say is though, is like, do I worry about getting typecast? Like I worry about ever having to leave. Like animation <laughs> is the best. Like <laughs> writing is so hard. And here's, a, here's the problem with live action. When you shoot it, it's done. That's yeah. it. With yeah. us, once you record it, where you're you're only halfway there and you can think of stuff later to make the whole thing come together that you didn't think of to the last minute yeah everyone thought you had the whole time That's and you true. seem so much better than you are like the, the freedom of animation is astounding as opposed to like well whatever we write tonight is going to be the show forever so i hope it's funny <laughs> for us. yeah no and the other thing is the end of it the animation you could you could only you know sell it Sunday night on Fox, and now there's so many outlets and so many great yeah. animated shows. This is really the golden age of television animation by far. And Did in my know? holding up stuff, this is from my first episode. We did a test because Marge had hairy legs after she gets her cut, cast cut off. We we're trying to decide whether it should be <laughs> as hairy as her head or just string with <laughs> leg hairs, and so. We went with the straggly leg hairs, but uh, so good. But it was going to be I like her head hair on her leg. Anyway, it goes well. Here's, what, here's Homer uh, imagining what pistol whip being, being pistol whipped is like. So he's scared. In his real Homer is scared, but Homer in the fantasy is is happy about the pistol whip. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to hold up something. I'm going to give this out when we have a question. These are Bart Simpson cereal uh, from nice. 2002. So the only condition is do not eat this under any circumstances. <laughs> so even with all the preservatives, 
I never saw that. I feel like there's so much merchandise that I never have seen where people, you know, they come to conventions or they, you go to an event or something and people bring you the most extraordinary stuff. And you're like, what? And even if it was licensed, so it was, you know, blessed by the studio and all that stuff, I'm like, I didn't know, I had no idea that existed. For all of you, what is some of your favorite stuff that you've collected or do you collect? Like, I'm very judicious about it. I have Bart Simpson dental floss. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we see that? Can you go retrieve it? Uh, we I would that? have to retrieve it at some other time. I have oh. a Bart Simpson asthma inhaler. <laughs> Carolyn. <laughs> First of all, huge. You couldn't put that in your purse or your pocket. <laughs> it makes asthma fun. <laughs> That's incredible. Gentlemen, I know that you collect a lot of t-shirts and do t-shirt quilts, but maybe that's not your prized possession. Well, I do love my t-shirts, but I also have my two Simpsons figures from the much reviled, but I love it episode, uh, that 90s show with grunge Homer, guitar rock utilizing nihilist grunge energy, and of course, classic Weird Al. <laughs> he was tired of Weird Al, is tired of life. <laughs> indeed, indeed. David Silverman, what do you got? You know, I'm just, I'm a big fan of the Kid Robot collectibles, and uh, I just, I just have a bunch of them. Um, this is one of my favorites. I, I just love the fact that it's Hans Moleman and the glasses are separate, you know. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> a really great one. That's so, fantastic. Al? Yeah, this. this is uh, an island of Dr. Hibbert, whole play set. Uh, <laughs> pitched uh, for the show by the late Kevin Curran. And uh, it sounds like eBay. Yes, it'll be selling for forty nine ninety five. <laughs> Bidding closes in twelve minutes. <laughs> I have a uh, 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 Hank Scorpio. Oh, that's a good one. And a Matt Groening. Oh. <laughs> oh, Matt wow! Little what small Matt Groening. My two favorite characters. Incredible. <laughs> oh, the other one that I have, I got to show you this one because it's, I guess, rare. It's the. Oh yeah. Oh. Funzo and Funzo. What was great about it, it came with a little Funzo as well. But I think that was Oh, really it's a Funzo. Funzo has a toy Funzo. Exactly. exactly. Ron English kid robots that, like, here's Homer. Oh, yeah. And then here's Mr. Sparkle. Love that one. I have a bunch of those. Very happy with that collection. <laughs> what, what, um, what era is kid robots? I don't have any. I feel cheated. Those have come out, I think, in the last 10 years. And there's yeah, 10 a lot years. of really cool ones. Yeah. Right. The only Simpsons thing I have. The, is, um, sorry, Al. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a Moe's Tavern, the Kim Robot. Oh, uh, yes. About. So, yeah, fantastic. Incredible. What were you saying, Thelman? There's only one piece of Simpsons stuff the family will allow in the main living area of the home, <laughs> which is a very cool and unique thing that a charity and probably illegal sorry everyone, thing to own, which is a uh, shepherd fairy print of like mm. a sh of Mr. Sparkle from the Mr. Sparkle episode. Oh, so, wow. No one arrest shepherd fairy. He's had a lot of troubles <laughs> in that area. <laughs> that is actually a good distinction because there are, I, I, so I have this room, right, with these cells in it, and it's, I have, there are a few more in storage and I switch them out every so often, but Otherwise, in my house, you would not know that I do the voice of Lisa Simpson because I don't have a lot of Simpson obelia around. And so, to your point, Matt, um, I think it's always really funny. Like, what what will the other inhabitants of your home allow to be on display where the rest of the public can see them also? Um, <clears throat> so good. I think that we are up to um, fan questions. Fan questions. So, da, 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 drum roll. <laughs> now. All right, hey, fans. Hey, fans. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Wow. I have this just so the fans feel at home. Hang on a second. There we go. I'm sure that we have at least. <laughs> uh, let's see, we're at Comic Con. <laughs> Wait, let me put my badge on. There we go. Oh, that guy. <laughs> Hi, guys. 
Um, I'm going to start with um, Alex Simpson, 23. Hello. Hello. How Alex. are you? Hi. We know Alex. We know Hi. Alex well. Yes. Number yeah. one, you know how uh, South Thank you all. Park, the Simpsons did it? Well, Simpson Toys, Alex did it. This is yeah. true. This is my collection. <laughs> well, I am very, very nervous. Don't be nervous. Okay. We don't, don't bother because we can't reach you, so it's all good. Okay, my question is, will there be an episode where the Simpson will visit an explorer Mexican culture? We'd, we'd love to do one. I, I actually wanted to say, uh, 20 years ago, I was at a wedding in Mexico City, and I got to go to the top of the Pyramid of the Sun, and I turned left, and then the guy next to me has a Bart Simpson t-shirt. So I was like, wherever you go, you're home. So uh, yeah, we love Mexico. We would love to have the Simpsons go to Mexico. And uh, for that, you could have the Bart Simpson cereal. <laughs> don't, eat it. Eat it don't, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. We don't want to read about you on the interweb that you <laughs> ate the 9,000-year-old cereal and <laughs> We went briefly to Mexico, religion. right, in Krusty's movie, wasn't that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also, I believe, Camp Krusty, didn't they end up going to... Guadalajara, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, they they, but we did not explore the culture. Tijuana. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Um, all right, Bart of Darkness, do you have hey. a question for us? So good to see you. Look at That's that. Great. Wow. Great. Lovely. Nice burns. This, uh, this, this guy was made in Germany. So you guys actually talked right. about all the stuff. I was going to ask, well, one of my questions was, what have you kept? What have you collected from the show? Which you guys answered in full, which is great. Um, <laughs> I wanted to show off a cell real quick. I know I'm supposed to just ask a question, but since so many, so many cells. Go ahead. Well, that's nice. Three men in a comic book. Three men in a comic. Wow. That's awesome. Beautiful. Classic. Oh, Good one. Great. The classic. How, how did you decide to, why that cell? Or was that like, uh, you, what, do you have a special affinity for Millhouse? Or it's a, what's, your, what's the deal? Um, so, I mean, you can see I, I'm a collector as well. I have stuff everywhere in here. And uh, cells are one of those things that when they go up, you sort of just have to find the one that you like because it's so hard to find. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you go looking for a specific one, it, it could be years before you find it. So that one popped up. I felt like I had to have it. I also have one from season one. That's just Homer in his pajamas in bed. Oh. Um, cells are a thing that I would love to have a wall like Yardley, but um, I have so much other stuff. It's just impossible. You, there's also like some uh, pre-production sketches and stuff nice. around. That stuff is amazing. Well, I have one. That, I have one that, this is like the one that's gonna. I think you fans are gonna like. Right? You ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Fans. Oh my god. Here we go. Yes. Oh, oh, right. that's, uh, oh. Every ape I see. Planet of the Apes Love it. musical or Stop the Planet of the Apes, whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the song of Mike. What's that? Oh, I always I've sang it a couple times. I won't sing it again. <laughs> yeah. Hog the, hog the limelight. He's got the cell. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Um, how about uh, Simpsons Bonanza? Are you here in the room with us? Yeah, I'm right here. Hey. Thank you. How are so, you? I'm good. Thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. So my question I would like to ask about guest stars. And the Simpsons over the years have had many ridiculously amazing guest stars, and they still continue to have guest stars. And I know this is a narrowing question because you've had basically everybody in the planet, but... <laughs> Uh, to the writers and producers out there, if you could have your one person you have not had on the show yet, who would you like to kind of write into The Simpsons as a special guest star? I just, I just want to mention people who are actually coming on next season, because we always want to do that. Uh, Hannibal Buress, Olivia Coleman, um, David Harbour from Stranger Things, and Ben Platt are on the show next fall, among others. Well, wow. cool. What about the rest of you, Selman? Well, um, the person that always came to mind for that, I, we actually did record recently in addition, so I'm, I'm going to answer this as a who I always wanted to get and who we finally did get, which was Sir, <clears throat> Sir Michael Palin from Monty Python will be appearing on The Simpsons, which is pretty yeah. exciting for me. Fantastic. I love them all, but I think, I think Sorry, the, sorry, everyone else. I think he's my favorite. <laughs> Not a bad choice. Yeah. Carolyn, what about you? 
I've had two favorites and we didn't get them. So, uh, you know. Uh, There's still time. There's still time. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean. We tried to get somebody else from Monty Python. I'll just say that as a clue. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, was, that, was, that was hard. Um, but yeah, you know, there's still time. I, I don't want to. You don't want to say? Oh, wait, uh, yeah, there was uh, somebody else. At another time, I would love to have Elaine May. Uh, oh. I, I think she's incredible and uh, that would have, but you know, she's semi-retired and that was. Right. But, uh, who's your favorite? Who, who's your guy's favorite of your guest stars? Too many to name because they're all wonderful. But like, no, see, I'd say oh, like Lovitz, uh, Kelsey, Anne Hathaway, uh, yeah. all great and incredibly talented. Amazing. Yeah, I love. I mean, Kate Blanchett was great. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, uh, right. When Sasha Baron Cohen came, he was so funny. Yeah. And he came in with like uh, like three different ideas for the character, the voice. And when Don Cheadle came in, he actually came in with music for the. So he was like, I don't know if you guys have written music for this, and he had it, you know, he was, there's been so many great people. Right, we had Jack Black, ah. got like, a special place in my heart because he had to sing in Korean, the, the phonetic, phonetically learned in Korean, the song Goldfinger, <laughs> and the James Bond people wouldn't let us use Goldfinger. Oh. And then we, we, we show, we're like, okay, well, once we send the James Bond people the video of the animation, they'll see how funny it is. And they'll, uh, no, they wouldn't clear it. <laughs> and then, so he had to come in and re-sang What's New Pussycat in Korean. <laughs> and uh, so he really was a pro. And then he would, and we could never force him to come back to do the character again. <laughs> I have to say something, David, in the photo behind you, Matt Groening looks mad. It's really scaring me. <laughs> oh, I, I'll cover him up. There we go. Okay. There we go. There we go. This is a little better. There we go. How about um, Amber Kwan? I don't. I don't. Or unless you want to call, want me to call you by your screen name, I'm happy to do that. Either is fine. Okay, <laughs> Amber, what do you got for us? All right. Well, when it comes to new characters on the show, how do you decide if it goes to someone who's already in the cast or if it goes to someone that's a guest star? That's a good question. At the, at the table, we usually have a cast member read it. Um, and sometimes, like, there's, there was one we were going to recast, for example, and Jim just said, Hank was great. Don't recast. Just have Hank do it. So we did. And uh, my personal preference, rather than having a part where it's a celebrity playing themselves, is to just have a great part. Like Kate, uh, Carolyn mentioned Kate Blanchett. There was this great character. And Kate played her, and it was something where, you know, had she turned us down, we could have still got somebody else great, but nobody could have been better. Right. I mean, like, sometimes we will write with a specific, specific person in mind. So it's a big part. Like, we did a big guest spot with the, this really funny actor, Michael Rappaport, who's just such a character in real life. And it was so fun after d decades on the show to pitch in a, someone else's comedic voice. You know, we're all used to pitching for Homer and Marge and Bart and Lisa and all our regulars. But so, like, another person that's already you know how they're funny you know how they're sound and for the writers to like pitch in their voice was a real uh treat are you suggesting we're old hat is that what you're saying yeah i know i mean we're kind of done with you <laughs> <laughs> the bloom is off the rose fine <laughs> moving on edward young hat, young hat your young hat <laughs> edward sanchez what do you got for us um what i want to ask about uh what inspired the Treehouse of Horror episodes? That was Matt Groening's idea, right? To do, uh, they were similar. In the 50s, there were these comics called EC Comics that I remember as a kid, like you couldn't buy them. They were so scary and creepy. And they would have these three scary little comic episodes. And uh, Matt had the idea to turn that into an animated you know, tradition with The Simpsons. And we were so worried the first few times we aired it that Marge has a disclaimer warning people it's too scary. And that's just because like Maggie was carrying a knife or something. Now we kill like 20 people a minute. <laughs> we, we were really worried we were just going to terrify every kid in America. So interesting. I love all this lore. And Mike Anderson, you have upped your game with your background 
with lobsters. You well, are. You lobster said no cat. pets, so I was worried, but. <laughs> good, so good. Um, it's just the Simpsons as fish. You were, you know, oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, probably you guys know this was the unused ending of the uh, Christmas special. How would we know that if it was unused? Well, I think I posted before, but uh, basically it, it was it was off screen where he says, like, I feel a honey, you hear Homer choking, but we didn't show it. But this was going to be the image. Brilliant. Is, it's too bad, actually. Love it. Um, and last but not least, Kevin Mock. I know you're, I got your screen name, Kevin Mock 08. Uh, you can just call me Kevin Mock. Okay. Kevin Mock, what do you got for us? Well, I, I think the number one question I have is like, uh, I, I know Fox has like a ton of brand new anime shows. I mean, they, they just ordered a fifth one today. They just ordered a fifth one today. So I was wondering like, like, like I know like Duncanville and Bless the Hearts are already uh, moving on to their second season. So I was wondering if they would ever, like you would ever like pop a little reference for the, those shows into The Simpsons anytime soon? Probably, you know, Duncanville is run by Mike and Julie Scully who are, you know, Mike still works here. They both worked here for years and are great. So we're really happy about that. It's it really is kind of like a big family. I mean, like people come and go from all these shows to Family Guy, you know. And um, we love them all. I mean, I'm really thrilled to, to be part of that lineup. Yeah, we've done cro little mini crossovers with Bob's Burgers before, which is such a great yeah. show and such a triumph. And and I, you know, we should, we should we should. One thing that's always a little weird to me though is like. The Simpsons are, are yellow in the show, right? <laughs> and the, we're all used to that. We're all used to that. But then when they're, they stand next to someone who is a more natural human skin color, from pink mm -hmm. to brown to whatever, the Simpsons look like mutants. <laughs> and you're like, what? I spent my whole life writing for freaks? This is insane. Yeah. Like, get those normal people out of there. Just keep it, keep it yellow. So or give the credit to... Oh, I was just to say it was uh, an animator, Georgie Pelusi, who had the idea to make The Simpsons yellow. And uh, Matt said, that's great. And I think it's one of the most, you know, as Matt said, if you're turning your television and you see this yellow thing, you go, nobody's done this before. Uh, now maybe since, I'm not saying minions. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason why she did it was the fact that Lisa Bart Baggy didn't have a hairline. So she had to choose a color stylist. And when we're doing the shorts, and she had to come up with a color that worked as a hair color and a skin color. Because the cartoon skin color would look weird and you don't want to add a hairline to destroy the graphic integrity. So here, I, here, this is somewhat relevant. Here's green Homer poking out <laughs> the cell. Oh, angry dad. And from angry dad. And I believe when we wrote this episode, there was a debate. Homer falls in some dye and turns green. And we thought, oh, if he falls in blue green, Oh, excuse me, he falls in blue dye, <laughs> green, <laughs> turn green. And then I think it would be fell into green paint, to be clear. Fair question. That was also when you were asking our favorite um, hey, yeah. voiceover, Stan Lee, Stan Lee. that episode, and he was adorable and so, he was just so enthusiastic. And uh, and then I, he, I remember after that, when he finished doing it, and then he was like, well, I just had one question. Because he tries to hulk out at some point, and they he's like, Ugh, and, he, and he's like, when I'm trying to hulk out, it kind of makes me seem like I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, no, 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 the character Stan Lee is crazy. Not exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. No, he was such he a, a, a more was, into his 90s, super, super nice. So it's great. really meeting What a great sport girl. to do that. Yeah, he was so, so, so nice. Um, do, uh, uh, I, David, I'm so struck by that story of that, um, or Al, if you were telling the story of the animator who chose our, our skin color to match our hair, that's, to me, I think that's my favorite thing that I've learned this whole panel. I didn't it's know it either. Great little nuggets of Easter eggy knowledge that you find out when you get the brain trust of the Simpsons like this together and you make them tell you things that they think everybody knows or nobody really cares about. You're all wrong about all of those things. <laughs> They're all fascinating, all like, incredible. Like, when they made that decision to make them yellow, like the show was so under the radar, like it, no one, there was no oh. microscope on the show as that oh, it would become oh, a, I mean, 
we're on the upstart network. Addiction destroying brand that it did. Yeah. That's right. Oh, oh, Neil, Neil. What's wrong? What's your question? Neil? I'm hey. so sorry. Hey, no, no worries. Hey guys, um, I have a question. So this is for anybody who wants to answer it. Uh, so a lot of us super fans, I'm sure everybody in the uh, in this uh, chat here can quote episodes at random, random quotes pop into our head every day. Uh, was there a show for any of you guys growing up that now it does for you? Um, and why is that show The Munsters is my question. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever show. I, I prefer to Adam's family over Munsters. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did too. I like that. Yeah, family. you had to make a choice. It was like Beatles or Stones. You you were on one side of the fence or the other. You were the enemy or the or the butt. I like them both, but I kind of leaned to the Munsters because I like the art direction of it. I just thought it was shot yeah. beautifully, like shot like a Universal horror film, but also shot for comedy. So I thought it was very smart. Here's a fun fact: Herman Munster, uh, Jethro Bodin, and Mr. Ed all tried out for the LA Dodgers. <laughs> I didn't even know that. They all hit home runs. <laughs> How about you, Selman? Did you, did you have a show as a kid that you gravitated toward? Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not young, but it certainly was The Simpsons. <laughs> 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 like I was in college when it came out, and it like, you know, it, I, you know, this is. The credit goes to Al and Sam Simon and Matt and Jim and all the original writers and Mike Reese who, who like created a blueprint for, for everything from like Pixar movies to funny TV commercials to, you know, all these other TV shows that have had hundreds of episodes and generated billions of dollars. Like that. And David literally saved the show, David and the director. And David, yeah, and all the animators, of course. <laughs> but just that, a show about a world, a show with human emotion, a show with pop cultural references, a show that was satirical, that, that was more cinematic, with but with deep humanity, like, that's like the blueprint that is, you know, it just changed, it changed entertainment for like three generations now. It's crazy. Carolyn, had you watched The Simpsons before you wrote on it? Yes, yes. No, I was a huge fan. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I had been writing some like, sitcoms and stuff when it came out so th that was also even more so where you really wanted to like it was just like that's what you want to do you want to do stories that were like broke the mold and it, it wasn't you know you could tell that they weren't getting network notes where they were being told to make it exactly the way everything else was and uh yeah I mean growing up I, I think I always gravitated towards slightly weird stuff even things like like Petticoat Junction, and think where they were like, they'd have like the weird pig, or like just, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, or Green Acres, where they had like very strange humor and Fernwood Tonight, and you know, uh, and I felt like, yeah, The Simpsons, and it was a very, you know, different, it just was really trying to be very artistic and funny, and yet there was a lot of heart. It was, uh, I know, it ticks all the boxes, it really does. That's a great question, Neil. Um, I think that's all our time, folks. You guys are the best. You are the dream team. You are the cream of the crop. You are all of those things. Thank, Thank you, you so me. much for joining us today. World, we hope that you are well and safe. Please stay that way. Happy 2020, and hopefully next year we'll all be together again wearing costumes, Donut ears, <laughs> signing autographs in person. A, oh, Jones, the, the, Homer is reading the Bible. <laughs> 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 our show owes a lot to our incredible cast, too. So thank you. Oh, of course. Thank yeah. you. So nice. Yes. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> How apropos that Millhouse is wishing the virtual Lisa Simpson goodbye. Thank Bye. you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.